The Second Battle of Gaza was fought between 17 to the 19th of April 1917. Following the defeat of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force at the First Battle of Gaza in March, during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of the First World War, Gaza was defended by the strongly entrenched Ottoman army garrison, which had been reinforced after the first battle by substantial forces. They manned the town's defences and a line of strong redoubts which extended eastwards along the road from Gaza to Beersheba. The defenders were attacked by Eastern Forces' three infantry divisions, supported by two mounted divisions, but the strength of the defenders, their entrenchments, and supporting artillery decimated the attackers. As a result of the EEF victories at the Battle of Romani, Battle of Magdaba, and Battle of Rafa fought from August 1916 to January 1917, the EEF had pushed the defeated Ottoman army eastwards. The EEF reoccupied the Egyptian territory of the Sinai Peninsula, and crossed over into the Ottoman Empire territory of southern Palestine. However, the result of the First Battle of Gaza had been as close to a British Empire victory as a defeat could get. In the three weeks between the two battles, the Gaza defences were strongly reinforced against a frontal attack. The strong entrenchments and fortifications proved unassailable during the disastrous frontal attacks when EEF casualties approached, and in some cases exceeded 50% for slight gains. Background and the 11th of January war cabinet decision to reduce large-scale operations in Palestine was reversed on the 26th of February Anglo-French Congress, and the Egyptian expeditionary force was now required to capture the stronghold of Gaza as a first step towards Jerusalem. Gaza was one of the most ancient cities in the world, being one of five city-states mentioned in the Bible as ruled by the Philistines and had been fought over many times during its 4,000-year history. The Egyptians and the Assyrians had attacked Gaza, followed in 731 BC by the Greeks, with Alexander conducting three attacks and the siege of Gaza in 332 BC. The town was completely destroyed in 96 BC and rebuilt slightly to the south of the original site. This Gaza was captured by Caliph Omar in 635 AD, by Saladin in 1187 AD, and by Napoleon in 1799. At Gaza there was an important depot for cereals with a German steam mill, barley, wheat, olives, vineyards, orange groves, and wood for fuel were grown as well as many goats grazed. Barley was exported to England for brewing into English beer and in 1912 the 40,000 inhabitants of Gaza imported 10,000 pounds of yarn from Manchester, maize, millet, beans, and watermelon, all harvested in early autumn, were cultivated in most of these localities. All of the desert column mounted and infantry divisions had fought during the First Battle of Gaza, when the column's 53rd Division had been heavily involved. This encounter battle by the mounted divisions emphasized speed and surprise. At a time when Gaza had been an outpost garrisoned by a strong detachment on the flank of a line stretching inland from the Mediterranean Sea, while desert columns Anzac and partly formed imperial mounted divisions quickly deployed to guard against Ottoman reinforcements strengthening the Ottoman garrison at Gaza on the 26th of March. The 53rd Division supported by a brigade from the 54th Division attacked the strong entrenchments to the south of the town. In the afternoon, after being reinforced by the Anzac Mounted Division, the all arms air attack quickly began to succeed. With most objectives captured, knights stopped the attack and a withdrawal was ordered before the commanders were fully aware of the victory. The first battle ended in debacle when the Anzac Mounted Division knew they were winning, and saw victory snatched away from them by the order to withdraw. This defeat coincided with low public morale in the British Empire reflecting the continuing Allied failures on the Western Front. General Archibald Murray commanding the EEF reported the defeat at Gaza to the War Office in overly optimistic terms such that his reputation as a consequence, depended on a decisive victory at the second attempt.
the commander of Eastern Force, Lieutenant General Charles Dobell, also indicated a substantial victory and Murray was ordered to move on and capture Jerusalem. The British were in no position to attack Jerusalem as they had yet to break through the Ottoman defences at Gaza. However, the Australian official historian described the First Battle of Gaza quite differently. In itself the engagement was a severe blow to the British army, since it affected the troops on both sides to a degree out of all proportion to the casualties suffered, or to the negative victory gained by the Turks. There was not a single private in the British infantry, or a trooper in the mounted brigades, who did not believe that failure was due to staff bungling and to nothing else. Preparations for the second attack included the extension of the railway to Deir el Bila, the headquarters of Eastern Force, to enable all available troops to be deployed for battle. Water reservoirs for 76,000 gallons were built in the Wadi Guzzi and dumps of ammunition and supply were established nearby. The weather was reasonably cool, and the health of the troops was good. Morale had recovered from the disappointment of the first battle, in which victory had so narrowly eluded him. Up until the 4th of April, Eastern Force had been responsible for the southern sector of the Suez Canal defense troops, 150 miles miles away. This duty was transferred to the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, lightening Doble's load. Reorganization of Desert Column between the first and second battles of Gaza, Desert Column, commanded by Lieutenant General Philip Churchwood, was reorganized into an exclusively mounted force comprising the Anzac Mounted Division commanded by Major General Henry Chauvel and the Imperial Mounted Division commanded by Major General Henry Hodgson, each with four brigades. Desert Column was to cover the infantry's right flank and attack Ottoman forces along the Gaza to Beersheba Road as far as Harera. The 1st and 4th Light Horse Brigades were ordered forward to join the divisions, to make up four brigades in each. The Anzac Mounted Division consisted of the 1st and 2nd Light Horse, the New Zealand Mounted Rifle, and the 22nd Mounted Brigades. The Imperial Mounted Division consisted of the 3rd and the recently reformed 4th Light Horse with the 5th and 6th Mounted Brigades. The 4th Light Horse Brigade arrived at Khan Yunis on the 11th of April and after dumping baggage was preparing to move forward on the 14th of April, carrying the light mobile scale of six emergency pack bags per squadron, three days rations, and 12 pounds grain on each horse. Reconnaissances on 1 April A reconnaissance was carried out east of Wadi Guzza between Wadi Esh-Sharia and the sea by one battalion each from the 52nd, 53rd, and 54th Divisions. The next day 1,000 Ottoman infantry advanced to the right bank of the Wadi Guzza. Both sides conducted day and night patrols. The 10th Light Horse Regiment scouts led a reconnaissance by the 3rd Light Horse Brigade east of the Wadi El Guzza, when Ottoman artillery was very active during a skirmish with an Ottoman cavalry patrol, some miles beyond the EF front line. Joseph W. McPherson, an officer in the Egyptian Camel Transport Corps was invited by two Royal Engineer messmates to accompany them on a reconnaissance during the afternoon of Good Friday. The 6th of April 1917, we saw parties of Turks and mapped down new trenches they had made, got sniped at incidentally, and had to travel a good bit of the way on our bellies. Air war aerial reconnaissance was carried out by both sides. Aerial photographs enabled a new partly contoured map on the 140,000th scale to be printed before the Second Battle of Gaza. However, each side was keen to monitor the other's preparations and the air became disputed territory. Newly arrived German aircraft attacked TEF reconnaissance aircraft during which several duels were fought, none being decisive. On 6 April five German aircraft approaching Rafa were intercepted by two AFC Martinside aircraft one of which was forced to land and was destroyed on the ground while the other went for reinforcements. 
three Martin sides arrived to attack the German formation. Aerial bombing was also strenuously continued by both sides, and while this aerial fight was taking place, hostile aircraft bombed Bur al Maza. On 7 April a joint raid by four Australian aircraft, with several from NO. 14 Squadron, bombed Gaza and the Ramla Aerodrome, hitting two hangars. At El Arish Hospital, Dr. Duguid described the strong moonlight on 8 April 1917. Now it is climbing the heavens. 10.30 p.m. It is as clear as day, and the shadow thrown on the sand is very definite. I hear we are expecting an air raid soon. The regiments are digging funk holes everywhere. Rafa was bombed twice on 12 April by three German aircraft after which 17 aircraft from the combined EEF squadrons bombed Ottoman positions along the Beersheba line, dropping 1,000 pounds of bombs each on HUJ and KH. Elber. Retaliatory raids followed in quick succession before midday and continued on during the three subsequent days, accompanied by increased heavy artillery fire from both sides. I should think there are at least 300 smoke wreaths floating above us in the sky, some black, some white. The only clouds in the serene blue, a Taube and an English plane are maneuvering and occasionally getting in a shot at one another. More English planes are coming up through a barrage of shell bursts and pieces of our own shells are falling in our own camp, almost a greater danger than Fritz's bombs. Joseph W.